So it is like super, super windy outside today and I was going to do like rototilling in the garden and stuff like that. But I'm just gonna continue right now. I just got a little bit of spring cleaning going on. Kind of got a bunch of crap that's been laying around. Got to take it to the dump. Um, just general spring cleaning in the shop. And then we've got to get some more work done on the forge. Dumped off a big old load at the dump. Uh, nice to get all that junk gone. And then uh, I just need to pick up some peat moss right now for our garden. And I need to spruce it up a little bit. The soil's not all that great. Those things, they're a lot heavier than they look. Yeah, that I'm just getting old. Hi, Hi, can I just get a large black coffee? All right, that'll be a dollar ninety. Thank you. You're welcome. Okie dokie. So we got our uh, got all our peat moss back, and it's super super windy out right now, so I am not going to be able to get in the garden right now. But that's a good thing because I actually just had a comment on the Tool Time Tuesday video. A gentleman said, "More forge building videos, please." We're gonna keep working on the forge. Now, what I've done, I didn't film it, but I just put my finished coat of the refractory cement on the inside. I see you. And that was about 18 hours ago, so it probably should dry a little longer. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go outside, kinda grind all this junk off, clean it up a bit. Um, I'm, I'm gonna try and grind it so there's not a lot of vibration. And then I'm not entirely sure, I'll probably grind this smooth too and then work on a stand of some sort and then cutting the little tables and welding those on. I'm excited. So we've cleaned most of the outside up. What I'm gonna do for now, uh, I, I don't have a heavy base that I could mount this. I think I want this pedestal mounted, so I'll just have a pipe and then like a big brake drum or like a tire rim or something like that. But I don't have anything that I can use for that right now. So in the interim, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little tack here and here and then a tack here and here just so it's not gonna roll around on me. And I wanna get this thing fired up and see how well it actually works before I get too carried away with getting a stand made for it. But I am gonna make my tables right now. And so I need to find the profile of this right here. I've got a cool little tool to do that for me. So I have no clue what this thing is called, but all it does is you push it against something and it'll find the exact profile for you. So when you need to mark, you know, match a profile of something like this, Super, super handy, because all I'll do, just gently, I don't need to get this so it doesn't move. All I have to do is just kind of push it against here, and all those pins will go in differentially. Let me move this over here. Okay, 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 let me adjust this. There we go. And now I can just push this against here. Boom. Now I've got the profile. You see it's not even perfect there. It's a little, little cattywampus, but it uh, should work. All right, so I've got that just kind of roughly tacked together now. I'm gonna try out the forge before I get too crazy with it. I was gonna get it all painted and everything before I used it, but 
I'm kind of interested more to see exactly how well it's going to work. In case I need to make changes, I'd rather not have gone through the trouble of painting it if I'm going to have to do much more work to it. Also, uh, quite a few uh, really good tips you guys have given me. The one thing, uh, comment I've received quite a few times is about putting a hinge on it and that would probably have been a good idea before I welded it up. I didn't think about that. From what I understand, a lot of people are saying that the uh, KO wool will kind of break down as well as a refractory cement. You'll have to reline it every now and then. So obviously if I had hinged it, it would be much more easy. So uh, well, I'll probably end up doing this. It ends up breaking down and I haven't built a new forge by then. I'll probably uh, cut it in half again and then put hinges on at that time. Also, one idea you guys have been giving me, really great tip, I appreciate it a lot, is some type of a choke on the air intake. And a gentleman, oh, I forget the viewer's name, but he suggested this, a ball valve. So what I've done is I just got a close nipple and I'm gonna put this on here with a ball valve. Now I can kind of throttle the air intake and adjust the type of flame that I have. Don't know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna try it out. But for now, we're gonna give this a go and I haven't swapped out the black pipe yet. I do have the parts, uh, but I haven't. And honestly, you guys, this shouldn't be getting hot in my opinion. Uh, but anyways, I will be swapping this out. I've got a new T, I've got a new plug in black, and I don't have one, no, I think I do have one of these as well. I wonder if I just swap it all out right now. No, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna test this. I really wanna see how this is gonna work. The one thing I'm not crazy about with this setup is it adds a lot more weight, and it's gonna be quite long, so that might be a consideration, but we're just kinda making it up as we go. Okay, I, I just can't wait. I'm gonna go try this out. Clearly that cement is not cured. That little throttle assembly works fantastic. I can get a lot of control in the flame. Now it's kind of hard to tell exactly what it's doing when it's so bright outside. Uh, you can't really see the flame that well. And then I put it into the forge and I fired it up just for a quick second and that top layer of refractory cement, it's not fully cured yet so it kind of bubbled up just, just a little bit. And that's just the top layer so I'm gonna have to wait. Uh, I think it's a 24 hour cure time and it's been like 16 hours maybe. But anyways, I'm gonna have to wait for that to cure so I'll probably fire up the forge this evening. I hate waiting for stuff. All right, so going through my collection of knives that I've got kicking around, I have so many knives that I just really need to get rid of. I mean, I haven't ever listed them for sale. I don't know why. But I'm gonna just sell them off super dirt cheap. So. I might put them on Instagram, some of them. Uh, some of them I'll put them up on my website. Uh, if you go to homesteadknives.com, you might still find some of these for like dirt cheap. Like, I don't know, I'm thinking like half the price of what I normally sell something like this for just because I've got, I probably have 20 knives laying around that I just need to get rid of that I've never ever listed before. So we're gonna just try and see if we can get rid of them. It's good spring cleaning. Also, this one is pretty cool. So I got that one ready to go, and uh, now I've got a road until our garden. It was so windy this morning, but it's a lot better now. <laughs> Thank you. 
right guys, we just finished dinner and I know uh, you guys want to check out this forge. Five minutes and you can see this is a uh, I think it's a pretty efficient forge myself uh, my burner my uh, burner is not cranked up by any stretch um, I've got it fairly low right now so I can get a lot more heat in there if I want to and then um, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a vortex in there where the flames coming around but a lot of the flame is coming out the front which I was hoping wouldn't wouldn't happen so I might have to angle it more to the back, but I mean, we've got the better part of that railroad spike pretty, pretty nice and hot. So pretty excited. I haven't, I haven't like cranked it right up to see if we can get like forge welding temperatures. But as far as just smashing steel, I, I think it's pretty good. Alright guys, there you have it. The forge is working. It's not official, it's not finished necessarily, but pretty happy with the way it's turned out. Um, I don't know, I need to think about it, I need to think about how it acts. Uh, based on what you guys have seen, if you have any uh, tips or suggestions or input, that would be awesome because I've learned so much from you guys, even on this like one little project. I mean, I don't know where I'd be without uh, the advice of experienced people so <laughs> kind of fun <laughs> I don't know I've got like two buckets full of railroad spikes I bought these like probably two and a half years ago for 25 bucks and it was back then I even back then I had the intention of making a forge and I thought those would be good for when I actually do it Is that that is a lot of fun. I can see why people really enjoy blacksmithing and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I could just spend hours sitting here. Uh, obviously I need to get my uh, interim anvils up off the ground because kneeling, that's obviously not the way to do it. So I need to figure out how to make bases for those and then I need to make a stand for this. And then so far I'm fairly happy with the way that all of this is working. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really actually quite impressed with it. So anyways guys, Thanks for watching. Cheers. Yeah.